Welcome to National Parks Traveler, where we explore the national parks and the issues that involve them. National parks inspire a lot of things, from career choices and landscape paintings, to all sorts of books, to the names of cars and trucks, and even to music. This is Kurt Repencheck, your host at National Parks Traveler. In this week's podcast, we invite you to tap your feet along to the music as Lynn Riddick shares the stories of two bands whose monikers and tunes are inspired by the national parks. There's National Park Radio and the National Parks. In a minute, Lynn returns with her conversations with these two very different bands. The Grand Teton National Park Foundation is a private, nonprofit organization that supports projects that protect and enhance Grand Teton National Park's cultural, historic, and natural resources. By funding initiatives that go beyond what the National Park Service could accomplish on its own, Foundation donors improve the visitor experience and provide benefits to the national park system for decades to come. See their successes at gtnpf.org. The Blue Ridge Parkway Foundation is the primary nonprofit fundraising partner for the Blue Ridge Parkway. It is made up of people who have a deep love for this majestic road and want to ensure that its natural beauty and the experiences it offers endure for generations to come. Show your appreciation at brpfoundation.org. Interior Federal Credit Union is pleased to offer members up to $500 in closing costs with a new home equity line of credit. Now is a great time to apply for a rate of 3.25% APR before they jump up. Take advantage of low rates and a great deal at interiorfcu.org. Membership is required. Equal housing lender. The Yosemite Conservancy helps visitors connect with Yosemite through adventures, volunteering, and the arts. It's the only nonprofit dedicated to supporting Yosemite National Park and funds grants to improve trails, restore habitat, protect wildlife, and inspire the next generation of nature lovers. Learn more at yosemite.org. Full of stunning photography and thought-provoking reads, Smoky's Life is a biannual magazine produced by Great Smoky Mountains Association. Members receive it free of charge each spring and fall, and it is available for purchase in retail stores throughout Great Smoky Mountains National Park and online at smokiesinformation.org. Today, I am speaking with Brady Parks, who's calling in from Ogden, Utah. He's the lead singer for a band called The National Parks. And of course, we were curious about that and wanted to know more. Hi, Brady. Welcome to The Traveler. Hey, yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Excited to chat with you. Well, let's start off with you telling me a little bit about your band. Um, where is everybody from? Who are the members? Awesome. Yeah. So we're the National Parks, like you said. Um, we've been around since 2013 when we kind of got together in college and decided to do a band. I'm originally from Colorado, just outside of Denver. And then Sydney, who plays keys and also sings, she's from a place called Kaysville, Utah, just outside of Salt Lake. And then Cam, who plays drums, he's from Draper, Utah. And then Megan is also from Draper and her and Cam uh, went to school together and everything. And, and I'm actually married to Megan. She's the violinist in the band and we just had our first baby. So it's an exciting time. Congratulations. So you mentioned mm -hmm. college um, and when you got together, how long ago was that exactly? Um, yeah, so me and Sydney met, I think it was 2011 or 2012. And we just started jamming together and became friends. Um, the band officially put out our first record as the National Parks in 2013. Um, and we've just been going ever since. Well, how would you describe your sound? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I think this, what we say typically is that we're an indie folk pop band. Um, we have a lot of 
influences in folk and roots music, but also a lot of pop and rock influences in our sound. So I feel like we cover a wide spectrum from really anthemic pop to really intimate, acoustic, meaningful songs too. Who writes the songs? Um, I'm the main songwriter of the band. My process is I like to sit down with guitar and or piano and start uh, brainstorming ideas and melodies. And um, once I kind of have something locked in, I'll start making demos of it and send it off to the rest of the band members who from there, they'll start working on their parts um, individually. And then we'll all come together at the recording studio that we go to and um, make it all come to life with the help of our producer. So it's kind of a fun uh, process we all have. So the big question, how did you decide on the name, the National Parks? Thematically, it was a name that fit perfectly. I, I write um, a lot about nature. It always seems to find its way into my songs. I think there's so many parallels between life and love and, and nature. And I, I tend to use it as a metaphor quite often to kind of explain how I'm feeling or what I'm going through. And then also my last name is Parks. And so um, it was just kind of like a perfect tie in, a perfect fit and seems to kind of capture the essence of who we are as a band too. Now, I noticed that your YouTube channel has had 5.6 million views since March, 2013. What do you think of that? And how have you built your following? Oh, that's awesome. That's good to know. I actually didn't know that number. So that's pretty cool to hear. Um, it's been fun. Um, I feel like we've experimented a lot with with different things on our YouTube channel from full on produced music videos to really raw acoustic videos to travel vlogs, like everything like that. Um, and it's been kind of fun to capture uh, everything through the years and be really creative about how we do it. Most recently, what we decided to do was go to different national parks and play acoustic versions of our songs at national parks. And so we just released the first one of those. It's um, an acoustic version of our song, Time, and we did it at Capitol Reef. And during that trip, we also filmed in Zion and Bryce Canyon as well. Um, so we're excited to be releasing some of that cool content soon. Sometimes there's shadows growing in my mind Like a sundial in the night time But if I close my eyes I Yeah, I, uh, I saw the video, Time, on YouTube and saw that it was shot in Capitol Reef National Park just a few days ago. Uh, I guess you released it just a few days ago. So yeah, we did. Yeah, so where did you get the idea to shoot a video in that particular national park? And uh, whereabouts were you exactly? Yeah, so we feel very fortunate to be from Utah because there's so many amazing national parks within driving distance of us. Um, so when we were planning out this trip, we wanted to do three videos at first. Um, and so the first one was at Capitol Reef but it's also very close to Zion and Bryce. Um, so we were able to knock out three videos in one trip. And yeah, we were um, actually just right outside the park, um, pretty much right by the entrance of Capitol Reef uh, when we filmed that video. Did you have to get a permit? Um, since we were outside the park, we actually didn't have to. And it actually worked out really well because the spot we found kind of has Capitol Reef right in the background. And it was like, 6 a.m. and zero degrees outside when we filmed it, so our fingers were freezing, but it was a really great experience to do that for sure. What about Bryce and Zion? Which videos did you uh, shoot there? And and did you have to, were you in the park? Did you need to get a permit? I'm just curious to see how all that works. Yeah, same kind of situation. On all the parks, we were able to find locations that were right outside that still had the park in the shot. And so it kind of saved us from figuring out if we needed permits or not. I actually looked it up and I think that they are not doing permits right now or like you don't need a permit technically right now, but just to be safe, we wanted to make sure that we were doing everything by the book. And so uh, we found these amazing locations like the one for Zion. We had to drive through Zion and then took a, a, a road out of Zion and we're pretty much right in it without being in the park. And so you have these beautiful zion 
cliffs in the background um and it's really cool um and we did our song monsters of the north at zion and then we did our song wildflower at bryce and i know and i know that everybody's dreaming they grow they grow like titans or it seems and i know i know i must be planted for a reason And all the locations are so unique and so different um, and really, I feel like, are the perfect backdrop to showcase our music. Yeah, I had seen the uh, Wildflowers video uh, online and I wondered where you shot that. Oh yeah, that was all over Southern Utah as well. Yep. Very nice. What's been your most popular song? Well, our most popular song on Spotify is our song, As We Ran, um, which talks about the Tetons quite a bit. So that's our number one. And it has been for for years. It got overtaken by our song Time for like a week, and then it's been back up at number one ever since. Singing. have a favorite song that you've recorded oh that is a tough one i feel like they're all my babies so it's hard <laughs> to pick um i feel like it's easier for me to uh say which ones i like to perform live because i think they all have a different energy live and that changes all the time but wildflower is definitely one of my favorites to play live and so is as we ran uh just because it's like a crowd favorite and so much energy and interaction with the audience and so um, I would I would say those where do you guys play where do you perform all over the place um like I said we got our start in Utah and then began touring uh pretty quickly after we formed so we've been everywhere in the U.S. um into Canada and this year we'll be touring quite extensively um around the U.S. starting in starting next week actually and not that this is a, a measure of a band's talent, but what's the largest crowd you've played for? Well, the largest crowd we've played for was probably, um, there was a festival called Moon River Festival last summer um, in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And that was about 20,000 people, I'd say. Um, and then just on Saturday, this last Saturday, we played uh, the national anthem and halftime show at the Utah Jazz NBA playoff game. And so that was however ca big the capacity at the arena is, 30,000, something like that. So that was a lot of fun. I'll have to check that out because I, I like to follow the NBA playoffs, but I missed that. So. Oh, awesome. Yeah, check it out. We, we posted the anthem and stuff on our Instagram. So was that difficult to sing? You know what? That was, uh, I'm, I'm more nervous playing the anthem than I am playing any other song of ours, because if we mess up one of our so songs, like no one knows, <laughs> but if you mess up the anthem, everybody knows. And if you don't sing it well, everybody knows. And so um, we practiced a lot and I think it went over well. We were pretty excited about uh, playing it. And once we were over with it, it was like big adrenaline rush and it was a lot of fun. I will say I listened to a lot of your music and I thought it was super catchy. And um, from the clips that I listened to, very positive. Tell me about the song, Live Till We Die. I heard an asteroid almost hit our planet and it only missed by a little bit. I heard the dam was broken, that soon we'd all be choking on all the water flooding out of it. And sometimes it feels like sleight of hand, and now the suburbs feel just like a wasteland. Yeah, um, Live Till We Die uh, was a song I, I wrote kind of mid-pandemic. Um, I feel like there's so much division and controversy on, on either side of the aisle uh, about everything from politics to the pandemic to you name it. There's just uh, like so many different voices and, and so much information out there. And 
Live Till We Die is a song about kind of wanting to escape all the noise. And, you know, in, in the chorus, it says, let's build a house in the woods where we can live till we die. And it's kind of just about wanting to live your life and not get caught up in the madness or the chaos of the world today, which I so often do. Um, but it's, yeah, it's about, you know, living life with the people you love and getting back to what matters most. Yeah, it's a great song. I really, really liked it. Thanks. Uh, what musicians inspire you? I'm really inspired by so many different musicians and artists and bands. Um, I think some of my biggest inspirations would be Bon Iver, um, Coldplay. I love reaching back to uh, Fleetwood Mac, uh, Michael Jackson, kind of all over the place. But I would say those are some of my biggest inspirations. Now, going back to the national parks, how often do you get to go to a national park to, you know, have a day off and enjoy nature? Usually we're traveling around. It's for tour or for videos, um, just normal band stuff. But once in a while, we actually get to go make a trip um, to a national park and just experience it and have fun. Megan and I went to Zion last year, last summer, and we just took two days and did a bunch of hikes. We hiked Angel's Landing and kind of just, you know, experienced it all. Uh, and it was amazing. It was really nice to just have a trip out in nature where we weren't working and just experiencing all the beauty around us. So we need to do more of it for sure. But when we do do it, we appreciate it a lot. Tell me about this music festival that you're involved in. Yeah, so we uh, last year started our own music festival. It's right outside of Zion National Park. Um, and it's been a dream of ours for years to put together a music festival in such a beautiful spot and, you know, bring together our favorite bands uh, for an amazing day of music and uh, celebration of life. And so um, this is the second year happening on September 10th in Hurricane, Utah, which is uh, in Southern Utah by Zion. Um, and it'll be awesome. We're having a bunch of big bands play with us and can't wait for it. So come see us, come say hi. Okay. <laughs> So the first year, what kind of turnout did you have? And, and what do you think? I know it's early. September is a few months away, of course. But what kind of turnout do you expect to, to find this year? Yeah, so the first year was honestly amazing. We didn't know what it would look like until it was actually happening. You know, we had this vision in our minds. Um, and it was actually a lot bigger and better than we could have imagined. We had a few thousand people out there. Um, and it's more of a destination kind of place. So you can go out there and then spend some time going to Zion or other national parks around there. So we were blown away by last year and we decided to grow it even more this year. So we're expecting about 5,000 people this year. Um, Headliner is Judah and the Lion with us playing Jamestown Revival, Small Pools, and a bunch of other amazing bands that we've looked up to for years. So um, it's going to be a big deal this year and can't wait to make it happen. So I noticed you have t-shirts and things for sale. And I was curious when you wear your National Parks Band t-shirt, what kind of comments do you get? Uh, yeah, I mean, depends on where we wear it. Um, I think when we wear it in Utah, where our most biggest fan base is, we get a lot of people that, you know, say they like us or they listen to our music or whatever. And that is really cool to hear. Um, and then when we wear it out somewhere else, uh, like, I, I think I wore it at Zion when we went hiking and people, you know, they liked the shirt, but I don't know if they knew what it meant or anything. But uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Well, Brady, thank you for your time today. Um, I really enjoyed talking with you and look forward to, you know, learning more about your music. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on. Uh, super excited about this and uh, we'll be on the road quite a bit. So if we're near you, come say hi for sure. I heard somebody saying this is all a simulation We are just the test patients Gotta take the medicine And take it all and strike computers Reading people's minds But yeah, everything is fine If we just close our eyes And sometimes it feels like sleight of hand And now the cities feel just like a wasteland I wanna know If we are gonna make it And that was music from a band called The National Parks. 
After this short break, I'll be back with another band with National Parks in its name, this one with an indie folk sound. Wild Tribute is lifestyle apparel founded for our parks and public lands. We donate 4% of our proceeds to support America's most wild and historic places. This is our Wild Tribute. Together, we can and will make a difference for the parks. You can learn more at wildtribute.com. Acadia National Park is one of the 10 most popular national parks in the United States. It is also one of the smallest and most vulnerable. That is why Friends of Acadia exists. Friends of Acadia is an independent organization of passionate people, inspiring those who love this magnificent park to make a real and lasting difference for Acadia. You can make a difference at friendsofacadia.org. Whether it be strategy, business planning, change management, board development, executive search, or diversity planning, Petrero Group is here to help. They mix a depth of experience in the parks and land space with a breadth of best practices from other industries. For more information or to schedule a preliminary conversation, go to potrerogroup.com. P-O-T-R-E-R-O group.com. Washington State is graced with three spectacular national parks, each different and special in their own unique ways. As the official nonprofit partner and the only philanthropic organization dedicated exclusively to supporting these parks through charitable contributions, Washington's National Park Fund has a mission to raise private support to deepen everyone's love for, understanding of, and experiences in Mount Rainier, North Cascades, and Olympic National Parks. Share your passion for these parks at WNPF.org. The Everglades Foundation, the only organization whose sole mission is to restore and protect America's Everglades. Learn more at EvergladesFoundation.org. and I'm heading to a different part of the country now, Northwest Arkansas to be exact, to speak with some folks from another band with national parks in its name, this one, National Park Radio. Stefan Zabo and his bandmate slash wife, Carrie Zabo, calling in from Harrison, Arkansas. Hi, Stefan. Hi, Carrie. Welcome to The Traveler. Hi. Hi. Well, I have to say that I was immediately drawn into your music upon my very first listen. Tell me about your music. Uh, How would you describe your sound? It's hard to describe. It's hard to put a a name on our our sound. You know, it doesn't really fit into one genre. But so we just kind of say it's indie folk. So it's got elements, you know, of bluegrass. Got elements of uh, folk and singer songwriter. Um, but it, if you if I had to describe it, it'd probably be like singer songwriter, you know, with more instrumentation in the folk slash bluegrass realm, uh, instrumentation wise. But strong focus on song and uh, art songwriting and um, singing. Anything to add to that, Carrie? Uh, not so much. That's like the hardest question people ask us because we sort of don't necessarily we didn't necessarily start this out trying to fit into any sort of hole in the music world just sort of making music and then that's what happened so is it just you and carrie in the band then currently at the moment we are the core of the band um carrie did not actually join the band until about four years ago i had originally started the band with a couple of my brothers and a couple of my good friends and um we started touring immediately as soon as i I released a, a five song ep but Coming from such such a small town, I had very limited options as far as like musicians to be able to uh, play with me. And since we were actually touring across the country, a lot of people can't travel like that. They have full time jobs or they have families or whatever, and they they can't travel. So what ended up happening throughout the next few years is I would uh, have some bandmates that couldn't travel, so I would find some replacements, and they would join for a year or two, and and so on and so forth until Carrie recorded vocals on uh, our 2017 album, Old Forest. 
And uh, then she became part of the band as soon as she was on that record. And we started touring together. We became kind of a husband-wife kind of duo at the core while we had other instruments like banjo or fiddle and bass um, kind of supporting the acoustic guitar and some percussion that we that Carrie was um, playing. But since the pandemic kind of took some bandmates away and they had to move move back to like their home states and get jobs we were out of work for a year and a half as a band um that kind of shrunk us to to tour last year as just a duo and uh we're kind of doing it mostly as a duo this year as well and so you play guitar anything else yeah i play guitar i play some banjo i you know, anything I'll, I'll make noise on. I'm not, not an expert at anything, uh, at everything, but uh, mostly guitar, percussion. Like, so as a duo, we've expanded our duties and we, we multitask. So I play a kick drum as I sing and play guitar, and I do alternating beats with a tambourine with my other foot. <laughs> and um, Carrie, Carrie sings, of course, and she plays like shaker and does keys to get yeah she she does different kind of other percussion things and along with keys for our live show um to kind of fill in this we actually produce a pretty big sound as a duo and it's a little bit more complicated setup uh, for just a duo we i think we have like 13 inputs in the mixer as a duo so we we end up kind of filling out almost a full band sound with yeah, just like, the two of us. I like to say, even if you don't like our music, if you come to one of our live shows, we're at least entertaining to look at um, mm -hmm. because there is, well, Stefan has both feet doing something, both hands and singing. And I actually, I get to have one foot that isn't doing anything and then that's it. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great visual uh, for sure. So you both have beautiful voices. Um, did you take lessons or are you just naturally talented? <laughs> I I wouldn't say we're naturally talented. <laughs> it, it, we've never had lessons, um, but we struggle to kind of find where we need to be a lot of times as vocally. But, you know, it just takes a lot of practice. And for me, I've always kind of had a passion for singing. I've never felt like a great singer, but I I enjoy it. Every time I start singing, it's like everything else goes away and I just I like it I, I love it you know it's just one of it's like my happy place so um but no no professional uh background we just kind of self-taught I guess like my as professional as I got in about middle school I started going to nursing homes and singing to people in nursing homes <laughs> because number one they enjoyed it and number two there's very little pressure when singing to elderly people who possibly can't hear you anyway well, the big money question is, how did you decide on the name National Park Radio? The, the Everybody asks the band name and the question, and it's a, it's a hard one to answer for sure, because at a certain level, any band name just needs a name. And so, like, my my brothers and uh, friends, when we started the band, we, were, we spent months just, like, throwing out random names, like, could we be named this? Could we be named that? No, no, uh, I don't like that. I kind of like that, you know, back and forth on a lot of stuff. And and where the location that we were always um, rehearsing and practicing and writing was about five minutes away from our home national park. The I call it our backyard park, but it's the America's first national river, the uh, Buffalo National River here in north central Arkansas. And so we were, you know, I grew up uh, there on the Buffalo National River. We camped there countless times. We, I re we were rehearsing, like, basically right next to it. And um, when we were throwing out band names, I threw out National Park something. I can't remember what, what I had said. But then my brother came back with National Park Radio, and I initially did not like the idea because I thought it was too close to National Public Radio. I thought, you know, NPR was, you know, it was already National Public Radio, you know, and it was just kind of too close to that. But then the more I thought about it, I could kind of see, like, I had like kind of a vision of, not like a magical vision, but I could just kind of imagine the the artwork that we could do and, and play with, you know, with the vintage um, posters that they've done um, in the Park Service for, for you know, back right, the old WPA. Post yeah, the old in the 1930s. And, yeah, I, I noticed that. Yeah, 
I we I loved that that art style, and so I kind of thought, well, we could do cool stuff like that. I could have a, like a really cool logo. We could connect, you know, with people that love the outdoors like we do, and that like love adventure and travel. And our music could kind of be a soundtrack for for that sort of thing. And uh, so that's when I w- I got on board with the idea. I really liked it, and so just kind of embraced it, and got to work on, on like a lo- creating a logo, and then and, and like my first little album art poster thing of of our buffalo national river here in arkansas and uh yeah from there we just kind of embraced it and and it's provided a lot of cool opportunities really going with the name yeah it's always good uh, whenever you first did that i was like well it's always good to have some like connection or excuse to possibly go to more national parks so i was like yeah all right well <laughs> we'll go with that yeah I'm glad that you mentioned the Buffalo National River um, because I I knew that you were very close to that uh, location. And also, you're not far from the Ozark National Scenic River in Missouri. And I see you have an upcoming performance at Tyler Bend along the Buffalo National River. So what kind of inspiration do you draw from being so close to these beautiful uh, national uh, areas? And uh, do you get out to the national parks very often? Yeah, I mean... Growing up on the river, it, it kind of felt just like normal to us. But as we, uh, you have to understand that like the we're at our the Buffalo National River pretty much as often as we can be. That's where like we taught our children how to swim mm-hmm. in the river. Um, that's it's a huge part of just al- almost everyday life here. Yeah, and so growing up, it was just like our normal thing. We didn't, I didn't never, I never appreciated it enough uh, as a growing up but now as an adult i see how beautiful it is and how lucky we are to have it and to have it have been protected back in i think it was 1970s um they were about to dam this beautiful river to make a a lake and and that's how it became a a national river that uh, there was a big push to protect it from being dammed up so yeah just now feeling how lucky we are to have it and um you know, it, it provides huge inspiration in, in songwriting and just um, in general. But, you know, not just that park. When I was a kid, my mom took us to like Grand Canyon and we traveled a little bit. And then as a after we started the band, um, we got to tour and really made national parks the main points of interest that we would, re- you know, book our tour around so we could camp for, you know, three, four, five days and um, and I remember our first tour ever, we drove out to California because we got asked by a guy who worked right outside of Yosemite if we could play there. He he found our band online and he liked the name and he liked the music. And he's like, I, I live right here by Yosemite. Come play here. And so we, we drove out there and we played and we picked up a few other shows, but we got to camp in Yosemite first time ever in California. Um, first time ever at a, a big national park like that. And it was, it was mind blowing and amazing. And that just they really lit a spark in me to, you know, visit and in, enjoy and appreciate all these other parks. And, and since then we've had so much time and, and amazing experiences at parks like Grand Teton, Yellowstone, Glacier, Yosemite, of course, multiple times, you know, I mean, all the big ones out West. One of the things that we're lacking is a little more Eastern parks. And that's kind of our goal moving forward is to kind of spread around a little bit more and enjoy enjoy, uh, more than just the Western parks. Tell me about the work that you've done with the parks. So it started out here in in Northern Arkansas. We were approached by a lady at the college that had a grant to promote. What college is that? Oh, uh, North Arkansas College. And here in Harrison, Arkansas, and she she was working with the college, and she had a grant to uh, promote like healthy outdoor lifestyles and stuff like that. And so, so she was worked with uh, National Park Service um, at the Buffalo National River, and we decided uh, that we were going to do you know a few concerts, a little concerts at their amphitheaters at a couple different um, campgrounds at the park, and so we ended up doing that, and it was amazing. I think it got cut short because of a government shut shutdown. So. Um, that's another thing. One thing we've learned working with national parks is the federal government agencies, um, you, you're, you know, you have to bend to their will. You know, they, they have rules and policies and regulations that makes it pretty difficult to, to do like musical performance, um, or any sort of business, um, activity in their park. So 
you know, jumping through all those hoops, we, we got to do a few little concerts and it was awesome. The park uh, staff loved us and we we loved being there and the people that came out, they, they loved it and playing in that kind of setting was just kind of magical. So eventually that turned into just like a bigger concert here at the Buffalo National River. Also, you know, and we did that kind of annually up until COVID kind of put it to a halt, which we're finally resuming this year. But we've also played up at the current river at the Ozark National Scenic Riverways with the National Park Service. We did a special event up there in Missouri. We've done, we've played at Rocky Mountain National Park um, in their visitor center there in, in, in uh, Colorado. Um, we've had very special experiences in Grand Teton with the rangers at Jenny Lake, like uh, organizing like a campfire circle with a bunch of rangers and park staff and doing cool campfire jams with them. Yeah, but when I was starting to tour, you know, my one of my dreams had always been to, like, I would love to just kind of tour around and play at a lot of national parks. And so it, it's it's happened. It's kind of happened halfway, and it's been a lot of fun. And, and we built a lot of great connections with a lot of park people um, throughout the, the last, you know, five, ten years. Do you know about the Blue Ridge Music Center along the Blue Ridge Parkway? I, they've, they've to, I, I've been told about it, but I, we haven't been there. Like I said, you know, eastern, east from Arkansas, we have not got to explore as much as we'd like. So we would love to be involved in, in that for sure. Well, what's been your most popular song? Do you have one? Yeah, our most popular song is called Mighty Mountains. And um, it kind of meshes together, you know, this idea of, of exploration and climbing a mountain, but using it as a metaphor to kind of overcome obstacles in in your life so um but yeah people really love that song it's it's i i love singing that song it's a great i don't know it's kind of an inspirational song it's strange we find when we are weak it's faith that moves the tall this peak and love that lasts for long after we're gone but if you can truly Now, what's your favorite song personally? I would say I like Old Forest a lot. Um, I enjoy playing that one. That one's got a fun energy live with the way that we do it. Um, we play it a little bit different. Whenever we play it live, then it was recorded. I gravitate more towards uh, Old Forest in life anyway. Um, the Redwoods are my favorite place in the entire world. I love the woods so much. So I definitely think I gravitate towards that one. One of my favorites, I, I'll just have to say that, one of my favorites is called Go, and it's um, basically a song, and I think of I think of my kids, or I think of children in general, like, as they're growing up, or myself even as a kid growing up, when I sing this song, because it, it basically, it's, the chorus tells you to go, do what you love, do everything you're dreaming of, um, and as you make life your own, try to forget what you've been told. So it's basically a song about finding your own path in life and um, not necessarily <laughs> doing everything you're, you, you're told to do. You know, you have to, you have to do what your heart tells you to do. And uh, that's, got, that's probably uh, why I love that song so much just because it's kind of the path I've, I try to follow in life is I don't try to fit into any mold. I don't try to, I don't just follow instructions from somebody to tell me what to do in life. I, I find my own path. I find my own way even if it's unconventional, even if it's not the same as anybody else that's ever lived before. I, uh, I want to just kind of follow my heart and do, do what I feel is right. In the night they roam, singing songs of desperation. No one knows if they'll ever find their home. As the cold winds blow, I can hear the voices calling. Let me go, let the water take my soul. Yeah, one thing you learn really quickly whenever you do, I would say probably anything creative as something that you're trying to make a career, is that there are two kinds of people in your life. The kinds of people who are like just pumped that you're doing it. They're so excited. And then another group of people who are like, you shouldn't do that job security, this, that, you know, <laughs> all the grown up things. Um, but it's you can't just not do it just because those people think that 
there is some chance that this won't work. Um, you can't just live waiting on things like that. Did you both grow up in Arkansas? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. We've never left home. <laughs> um, yeah, we've never moved away from home. So we live on land that was actually homesteaded by my family. There's a house that like my great great grandfather was born in is still on the property. Um, my dad lives on the same land. He lives on the back and we live on the front. It's um, it's pretty ideal. But I will tell you that if we did not, if we were not able to travel so much doing this as a career, I would probably go crazy being stuck here. So <laughs> you've got you've to be able to saving, leave. <laughs> the saving grace of, of living in, you know, here in the middle of the country, kind of south and just like in general, like very rural, rural area um, is that we get to travel um quite a bit and you know touring and with music and but then it's so nice because we we do come back to this this little yeah piece of privacy very you calm know. it's a very calm you know private place that we get to come back to whenever we're it's been insane for three months on the road yeah and i'm very familiar with your neck of the woods and it is very beautiful down there in that part yeah. of the country yeah, we like to we like to tell people we're the good part of arkansas yes this is the pretty this is the i mean arkansas is great but this is the really pretty part mm-hmm well, what musicians have inspired you? I grew up, you know, just listening to the radio like a lot of kids. I didn't have, I didn't go to a lot of concerts. I didn't, I was just, you know, inspired by Top 40 Radio, which to me, thinking back about it, was really, you know, a lot of bad music. But um, now uh, as an adult, I I got into more like indie type music that wasn't necessarily mainstream. And my tastes have have evolved over the years from like when I was younger to like, yeah, when I was younger, it was like heavier, more rock and roll as a teenager. And and then when I started having kids in my early 20s, it was like more mellow music. Um, But I I feel like I always gravitated towards that singer songwriter type of, of song where like really beautiful vocals and really meaningful uh, lyrics in the in the songs, and so, you know, regardless of who it was, if it if they if I if their voice was good and and they wrote you know, meaningful lyrics, I would probably like them. It's hard to 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 name a lot of artists or to name our favorite artists nowadays because there's just so many out there that are so good that we love. Like it feels wrong to just name out a few, but. I mean, <laughs> So I saw that you raised over $62,000 from fans to record an upcoming album. Tell me about the plans for that. Yeah. So we initially earlier this year, I've been telling people like, we're going to do a new album like this year. We're, we're going to do it. I'm going to probably record it in my house. <laughs> we're just going to do it like we did the last one. And there's always was something in, inside me that knew that, you know, I admit to myself that I'm not, I'm not the expert at, you know, engineering. I'm not the best, you know, uh, recording, you know, recording engineer and, and producer of, of, of records. So there was something inside me that was like, well, if I do this in my house again, it's not, it may not like be an improvement on what we did last time. And I always want to progress and improve, um, with every new thing that we do. And so I, I, tested the waters to to look for like a producer or somebody to help me produce the record and it it was for a while there was not nothing too compelling and then i i got a email from a guy in nashville his name's nick bullock and he uh we really just clicked with him and we we loved his philosophy about making music and how he you know his philosophy was you know he want his job is to help us accomplish our goal and to climb the that mountain and to help us make sure that when we're when we're done with the record it's it's our vision that's accomplished and it's better than what even better than what we thought it could be um and you know and just talking with him over zoom and and phone calls we we really appreciated that about him and even though it was going to cost a lot more money than doing it on our at our own in our house the diy approach we decided it would be worth it in that we knew the fans would um support it if we you know started a crowdfunding campaign to pay for that and so it was a whole it all came together so quick like literally probably you know a week or two maybe two weeks after we decided we were going to do crowdfunding we launched the campaign and 
yeah, it, it was crazy. Our fans are awesome. They 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 contributed. They blew blew right past our first goal, and you know got us to you know, over sixty two thousand uh, raised for this record, which we will be going to Nashville, like literally. Uh, yeah, what the second week of May, and uh, we will be recording. Um, a full-length album in Nashville, and we'll be able to use all the resources that Nashville has to offer. With a uh, you know some of the best musicians in the world, we'll we'll utilize some of that to to play on our our record as as session musicians and and uh, just really make a uh, take a a big step forward in in how we're uh, we approach a record and uh, hopefully and and I want it to be a little bit better than anything we've ever done before, and that's kind of my my goal. And to, like just to stay true to sort of how we do things, um, where our children are coming, um, they've never missed a, a a single part of any of this whole experience, really, and so they're gonna come along. Um, we actually homeschool them, so um, so they're gonna still just be doing school. But um, so this is definitely everything we do is a is a family <laughs> a family adventure for us. Yeah. Well, Carrie and Stefan Zabo, I would like to thank you very much for joining me today. I think your music is inspiring. It's a true treat. And keep us posted on the Nashville recording and stay in touch. Awesome. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Yeah, thank you. should go do what you love do everything you're dreaming of and as you grow make life your own try to forget That's our show for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. Coming up on May 17th on the Traveler's Monthly Webinar, I'll be sitting down with Jonathan Jarvis, the National Park Service's director during the Obama administration, and his brother, Destry, who has been a conservation leader for over five decades. The brothers are coming out with a book that discusses their careers and which issues a call for the National Park Service to become a freestanding agency outside of the Interior Department. It should be a provocative conversation. Go to nationalparkstraveler.org and search for National Parks Traveler Webinar, an independent National Park Service, to find out how you can attend this live presentation. For The Traveler, this is Kurt Repencheck. See you in the parks. The composers and musicians at Orange Tree Productions have created a unique collection known as the National Park Series that has grown to include more than 30 CD titles. Composed against the backdrop of a park's sounds of nature, these musical scores will connect you with these beautiful places and take you there, at least in your mind. This collection is the number one selling National Park audio series in the world and provides the background music for National Park's Travelers podcasts. Visit them at orangetreeproductions.com. Editing and production work for the National Parks Traveler podcast is done by Splitbeard Productions. You can learn more about us at splitbeardproductions.com. National Parks Traveler is a 501c3 nonprofit media organization that provides daily editorial coverage of national parks and protected areas. Traveler's coverage is made possible by reader and listener donations. Visit nationalparkstraveler.org.